everyone so it's been a really long time since I made a video and posted it um I've been actually my main goal was probably to post a review or whatever my thoughts about every book I read but I just kind of kept reading and then never got around to making a video um never had that much time to I guess so now that it's like August and it's been like three or four weeks since I made my last video I thought I just uh thought I'd just like actually put just all my July reads into a quick video and all my August reads up until now into a quick video just to make it easier so I don't have to make a whole bunch of really short videos. So I'm just going to go through them really fast. Um, in July I think I read six books. The first one I read was The Heretic's Daughter by Kathleen Kent and I gave it four to five stars. It's basically about Sarah Carrier and her family. It's told through her perspective. She's the daughter of Martha Carrier and I can't remember her father's name and it's basically just about all the events, little things that led up to the, f the finger pointing and people being accused of being witches and stuff and I really actually found it really neat that the author can actually trace her heritage or her ancestors back to um, Martha Carrier who actually was one of the first women who lost their lives during the Salem witch trials and it's just even more shocking because it actually happened um just things like when they had the trials like it's just so ridiculous like of course the people the girls that accuse people of being witches when I don't know something like when ever any time the accused looked at them they started dropping and having fits and stuff it's like are you serious? Like, of course they're, I don't know, like that's the only evidence you have. Like, they're obviously faking, like whatever, of course. I don't know, it was just frustrating to read because it's so ridiculous and eventually like all the people that they had and it sounded like they had like tons in the jail cells and they weren't really treated that nice and stuff, like it was horrible. They just got released and stuff, like what the hell was the point? I mean, it was just like hysteria, it was ridiculous. But it was like really depressing, I mean of people lost their lives and like hung and stuff like I don't know I really enjoyed it though so I gave it four to five stars uh the second book I read um and that one I borrowed from the library so the second one I read was I Got Your Number by Sophia Kinsella and I've actually read some of her shopaholic books and I actually kind of enjoyed them um I mean nothing beats like fluffy chick lit easy reads that's like just pure total you don't really have to think too hard about it and stuff and just can enjoy enjoy it and stuff it's basically about poppy she loses a family heirloom that her boyfriend or i guess fiance gave her when he proposed to her and she's like frantically trying to find this ring i think she was at a hotel to meet with a caterer or something and then she goes out and I can't remember who she's calling or what she's trying to do, but she's like trying to think of all the places that she could have lost it. She like went to use her phone and her phone was like literally ripped out of her hand. But then she finds a cell phone that was like thrown into the garbage can by this other guy's personal assistant and she like commandeers it. And then it's basically the rest of the book is him trying to get it back from her and her saying that she absolutely can't give it because she's given the number of the cell phone from the other guy's personal assistant to like everyone and she like really needs this ring back and she's like frantic because it's like a family heirloom and yeah so I mean you can just imagine what happens but uh, I won't ruin it but you can just kind of imagine who she gets with at the end but um yeah I mean like she basically becomes this personal assistant she has to keep forwarding stuff to him and like she even took it upon herself to email some of the clients and stuff which I thought was wrong because like she has no idea like what the hell he does and what his job is and what it entails and stuff so that's kind of bad but I mean everything worked out in the end I really kind of enjoyed the banter between Poppy and what's his face I can't remember his name which is bad but I mean I don't know it was a fun read so I gave this book four to five stars then I read a book called Catch Me by Lisa Gardner um this was actually a book a friend gave me at work to read. Um, I found out that it's actually a Detective D.D. Warren novel so it's like number six in the series but you actually don't have to read them in order. I found I wasn't lost at all. Um, I was kind of sucked in the story straight away like it's kind of an interesting concept like this girl uh, Charlene approaches D.D. Warren the detective and says hey 
I just want to meet the person that's probably going to be investigating my death because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be murdered in four days and the reason why is because like two of her best friends a year apart like the year before she was born on the same or she was born she was killed on the same day and then the year before that her other friend was killed on the same day so I mean it was just kind of a weird plot I guess um, I actually kind of couldn't put it down I got sucked right in and honestly though I can't remember what the twist was I can't even remember who did it or how it ended but all I know is that it was a really good book and I might actually like kind of look up her other books like sometimes it's nice to just have like a detective mystery kind of thing going on so I gave this four to five stars then I picked up this one called The Experiment by John Darnton. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, I picked it up and it's kind of thick, but it was, I mean, it's The Experiment. It sounded kind of interesting. Um, it's basically takes place partly on a secluded island and people there are like in their mid-twenties. A few of them, like, they can just wander around and stuff. There's diff different buildings and stuff, but they have to stay there. Um, a few of them discover that one of their friends that has gone missing dead in one of the basements of one of the like the main room I think it was like a autopsy room or whatever and then on the mainland a reporter starts investigating a body that washed up on the shore who didn't have a face his face was taken off and his fingertips so like any and I think maybe his teeth like anything that could identify who he was um, yeah, so the first 200 pages, I was like sucked right in. I couldn't put it down. But after that, it just started dragging. And it was just like, by the end of it, I didn't care what happened to any of them. I didn't care whatsoever. And honestly, I can't even remember what the twist was. And all I remember is at the end, when I was done, I was like, meh. So it started off really well, but I just thought it was like so long in the middle. I mean, they just kept, ran it seemed like to me, they just kept randomly doing these detours and finding like, Oh, they just happened to stumble upon this clue that they needed to find the next information information to solve this mystery of what's going on so I was just like whatever so I'm disappointed in that I thought it was kind of an interesting idea but whatever so I only gave it two out of five stars and the last book I picked up at the I don't know the last book I read I guess in that month is called the Dark Heroine Dinner with a Vampire by Abigail Gibbs and I have to tell you that I absolutely probably picked it up because it says Dinner with a Vampire because I like vampire stories and I really like the cover and like kind of like the size of the book I don't know the text was kind of a nice size and like it's kind of like I don't even know how to describe that it's kind of bumpy I don't know I just like the feel of the book and stuff so I thought I'd give it a try like I mean I got it at a second hand store for a dollar so I can, couldn't uh, lose I guess. Um, yeah so I guess this is like the first book in the series. There's going to be a bunch of them. Um, I kind of, it like sucked me in right away. I mean you follow around with Violet who kind of is in the wrong place at the wrong time. She's in the UK and I don't know she like comes upon these, this like brutal murder scene. Like she witnesses it and then the leader of the bad guys who we learn later find out is Casper and he's a vampire decides instead of just killing her which he probably would have done something for some reason he decides just to take her back with him to his family's castle and then like I don't know it was just I kind of enjoyed their banter between the two I mean roll your eyes like you know what's gonna happen with all those types of stories but whatever um it, it I kind of like the concept of the book like you kind of find out that there's, I think there's nine different worlds and nine different dimensions and then there's some sort of prophecy and then you find out who the first heroine is and they have to find the other heroines. I don't know. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it was there's too many errors. Like at one point she's got her socks on and she's walking across the cold floor and then the next page she's saying, oh the floor is too cold on my bare feet and then she has her socks back on again. It's like, what? You didn't take your socks off? The same thing happened with like her boots. She was standing in this hallway and she was describing, she's describing like her boots and stuff and then the next minute she's in a different room um, in her bare feet and her feet are cold again. It's like, what? You just had your boots on and say you took them off. And then you think, okay, well, maybe she just took them off and you didn't know. No, because then in a paragraph after that, she actually takes her boots off. So it's like, what? I don't like errors like that. Continuing errors really bother me. Um, yeah, I think like 
Casper, I don't know, the vampires in the book, they're kind of interesting because I think they can be turned, but they can also be just born into vampirism and they actually grow until they're like 16 or something. Um, I think the only other two siblings of Casper's that I actually liked was his brother Cain and his youngest sister, who I can't remember her name, but she's like four years old and she's just like this little cute little thing, like little pointy teeth. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I gave it three to five stars. Um, all in all, not really a bad month. I mean, had a lot of time to read, so yeah. Anyways, talk to you guys later.